Hi everyone I welcome you all for this nursing wisdom channel Today we are going to see about changes of the fetal circulation at birth At birth major changes take place the umbilical cord is clamped and the baby no longer receives oxygen and nutrients from the mother With the first breaths of the air the lungs start to expand and the ductus arteriosus and the foramen ovale both close the baby circulation and blood flow through the heart now function like an adults the hemodynamics of the fetal circulation undergoes profound changes soon after birth due to cessation of the placental blood flow initiation of respiration that means soon after birth two major things will happen one is stoppage of placental blood flow and baby will start to breathe What are all the changes occur in fetal circulation after birth means closer of umbilical arteries closer of the umbilical vein closer of ductus venosus closer of ductus arteriosus closer of foramen ovale after baby born baby will start to cry and breathe so lung will get expand and start to function now no more need of this placental circulation so we'll cut the umbilical cord umbilical cord contain umbilical artery and umbilical vein umbilical vein taking blood from placenta to fetus umbilical artery taking blood from fetus to placenta now let's see what are all the changes occur after cutting umbilical cords closer of umbilical arteries here first umbilical artery will start to constrict and it prevent even slight amount of the fetal blood to drain out to placenta the functional closure of umbilical arteries occur almost instantly actual obliteration take about 2 to 3 months the distal parts form the lateral umbilical ligaments and the proximal parts remain open as superior vesical arteries second one is closure of the umbilical vein after closure of the umbilical artery little later the umbilical vein will constrict and obliterate why it is closing little later means an umbilical vein allowing few extra volume of blood to be received by the fetus from placenta around 80 to 100 ml after obliteration the umbilical vein forms the ligamentum teres next change is closure of ductus venosus the ductus venosus collapses and the venous pressure of the inferior vena cava falls so right atrial pressure also will fall after obliteration of ductus venosus it become ligamentum venosum next change is closure of ductus arteriosus Before birth what will happen the lungs in non functional state and lungs are collapsed so the pressure in pulmonary artery will be high it will resist the blood going to lungs so through the bypass ductus arteriosus that is connection between pulmonary artery and descending aorta the blood will bypass to aorta now after birth what will happen baby will start to cry and breathe so the lung will get expand if the lungs expand the vessels also will open that means the pulmonary artery will get open so now the resistance to the blood flow to the lungs are less now pulmonary circulation will get started and now the placenta is not supplying oxygenated blood so now what will happen the blood coming from right ventricle through pulmonary artery will go to lungs and will get oxygenated because now baby is breathing from lungs the blood will come through pulmonary vein to left atrium from left atrium it will go to left ventricle from left ventricle while ventricular systole it will go to aorta now highly oxygenated blood going through the aorta in aorta one shunt is there what is that shunt ductus arteriosus now the blood going through this shunt ductus arteriosus what will happen this shunt is very very sensitive to 
three things first one is oxygen so now highly oxygenated blood coming through this shunt while the shunt highly oxygenated blood reaching the shunt ductus arteriosus the shunt will get sensitivity to this oxygen and smooth muscle present in the shunt will get constricted second one is bradykinin while the lung expand in first time that will produce bradykinin that bradykinin will travel through this blood flow and reach this ductus arteriosus shunt while reaching shunt will get sensitivity and will get constrict third one is prostaglandin e2 previously the cells in ductus arteriosus producing prostaglandin e2 in low oxygen tension that will help help to keep the shunt open so if highly oxygenated blood reaching this shunt the cell will not produce prostaglandin e2 and the decline of prostaglandin e2 also will constrict and close the shunt after closure the ductus arteriosus become ligamentum arteriosum the functional closure of the ductus arteriosus may occur soon after the establishment of pulmonary circulation the anatomical obliteration takes about 1 to 3 months and become ligamentum arteriosum next change is closure of ramen ovale here we know before birth in fetal circulation the right side pressure of the heart will be higher than left side of the heart because more blood coming from umbilical vein to right atrium but after birth the left side of the heart will be higher than right side of the heart how means after cutting the cord the blood flow to the right atrium will be low so right atrium pressure is low but after breathing lungs is functioning and pulmonary circulation started to work so more blood draining now in left atrium so now left atrium pressure is high due to more blood flow so now what will happen the communication between right atrium and left atrium made by foramen ovale which was the hole in the septum secundum other side septum primum is there previously pressure in right atrium high that will push the septum primum down and the blood flow to left atrium but now the blood in left atrium will higher than left atrium so the pressure in left atrium will push back the septum primum into its place so it will get close so no more blood flow between right atrium and left atrium after closure the foramen ovale become the fossa ovalis functional closure occurs soon after birth but anatomical closure occurs in about 1 year time postnatal fetal circulation now let's see postnatal fetal circulation if you see this flow chart you can understand well after cutting umbilical cord the umbilical artery will constrict first to prevent blood flowing back from fetus to placenta and become umbilical ligaments little later the umbilical vein will constrict why it is constricting little later means it will allow draining of blood present in umbilical vein to fetus around 80 to 100 ml blood will drain to baby then umbilical vein will constrict and form ligamentum teres then the umbilical vein blood flow will reduce so the ductus venosus will collapse and the ductus venosus become ligamentum venosum the blood flow to right atrium will be low because there is no blood flow from placenta and the pressure in right atrium will be low but the pressure in left atrium will be high the pressure in left atrium will push back the septum primum into its place that will close foramen ovale after getting close this foramen ovale become fossa ovalis then from right atrium the blood flow to right ventricle from right ventricle via pulmonary artery the blood will go to lungs and get oxygenated through pulmonary vein this oxygenated blood will get drained back to left atrium from left atrium blood go to left ventricle and to aorta while ventricle systole 
After reaching high wood to blood in aorta, the bypass between pulmonary artery and aorta called ductus arteriosus will get close. How means? Ductus arteriosus is very sensitive to high oxygenated blood, increased bradykinin in blood and decreased prostaglandin E2 in blood. After closing, the ductus arteriosus become ligamentum arteriosum. From aorta through subclavian, coronary and carotid artery, the oxygenated blood will get supplied to upper part of the body. And through descending aorta, the oxygenated blood will get supplied to lower part of the body. Then the umbilical artery will not train back to placenta because it already constricted. After circulation completed, the deactinated blood from lower part of the body will get trained to right atrium by inferior vena cava and the deactinated blood from upper part of the body will get trained to right atrium by superior vena cava and this circulation will continue. Within one or two hours following birth, the cardiac output is estimated to be about 500 ml per minute. And the heart rate varies from 120 to 140 beats per minute. That's all about the changes occur in fetal circulation after birth. I hope you all got understand. Thanks for watching.